So how effective are the best ad blockers at blocking malware? In order to test that, we have a browser test script, which will visit the 100 latest reported malware links live in the wild on this test system. And we're going to see how you block Origin, which many would argue is one of the best ad blockers out there, and the most efficient ones, fares. Before we start with this test though, I wanna make something clear. What we're testing here is gonna be serious malware delivered via drive-by download, targeted attack, whatever it is. But there are obvious malware blocking benefits to using an ad blocker. So for example, if we go to a wallpaper site like this, as you can see, we're bombarded with pop-ups and a lot of these pop-ups will lead to adware downloads. For example, if we click here, this is obviously not gonna get us the wallpaper, but it's gonna take us to some other random adware that's going to be downloaded, that's going to change our search engine, not good. Similarly, malvertising or malicious advertising where threat actors buy ads on Google for popular software, replace it with their own malicious versions. All of that can be easily blocked if you have an ad blocker. So for example, if we turn this on here, refresh the page, boom, all of these ads are gone and so is the adware that comes with it. But what we're testing in this video goes well beyond that. We're testing if an ad blocker is an effective shield against real malware attacks, not just whether it blocks ads that show up while you're browsing. So let's get started. First of all, I want to show you the filters that are turned on. So we do have a malware domains filter in the uBlock origins settings, and we're going to turn both the malicious URL and phishing URL options on. For this test, we have also turned off Firefox's default protections because we want to see how effective the ad blocker is on its own. And then we're going to turn this on and we'll see how it does. And then we're also going to compare that to a real popular antivirus internet security software, Malwarebytes, and see how each of these options protects you and to what extent. Now, Firefox should make this test very easy because we just have to monitor our downloads folder, see what gets downloaded. Everything is set to automatically save. So here goes nothing. We're only visiting the 100 latest malware URLs. What could go wrong? <laughs> here we go. So as you can see, we're visiting a lot of websites really fast because this is automated via our script. And a lot of these are getting blocked. So if I open one of these pages, you can see that uBlock Origin does have some messages for us. We do have some of these links, exe files blocked as they're found in the malicious URL block list, but we do have some downloads getting through. So if we take a look at our downloads folder, we do have 22 items that were successfully downloaded. That's a lot of malware. So if you take the 100 URLs that we visited, 22 successful, that basically gives us a detection rate of 78%. So that's how much malware you can block effectively using an ad blocker like uBlock Origin. Now I want to compare this with Google Safe Browsing, which is the default protection that comes with Firefox. So again, I want to test each of these things independently. Of course, realistically, you would have both the setting turned on as well as the ad blocker. If you have any sense, there's no reason why you would turn off one or the other. But what we're trying to do obviously is test how effective each of them are in terms of the capabilities that they bring. So this time we're gonna rerun the test. We're gonna delete everything in this folder get rid of it so we can start fresh and we're going to redo the test and see how much malware gets through. So this is a test of default protection with Google Safe Browsing, no ad blocker. And once again, we're visiting a lot of these websites, but now, as you can see, we're going to have a lot of downloads flagged as potential viruses. Let's just allow the test to complete, get to the 100 URLs, and now we can see a lot of things are getting downloaded, but a lot of things are getting flagged as this file potentially contains virus or malware. You can argue whether or not these warnings are effective since you can still allow the download, but assuming the user doesn't do that, we're gonna count those as a block. And it's a bit tricky because a lot of these partial downloads still show up in the folder, but to fix that, we're just gonna close the browser. We're gonna delete everything that has a size of zero kilobytes because it basically means the download wasn't allowed to start. And we're also gonna get rid of anything that's not really an application that's just a 
part file. Because again, this is a partial download. You're not really going to be able to run this and damage your system. So when we get rid of all of that, we just have three files that were fully downloaded that were malicious applications. So that's a drastically better detection ratio of 97%. So the app blocker really doesn't move the needle as much in terms of offering better protection. I'm just going to turn on web protection for Malwarebytes Premium on my host system because that's also going to affect the VM and we'll rerun the test. We'll delete everything and we'll see what we get with a security solution. So once again, because I want to test each of these components independently, I'm going to turn off the protection features inside of Firefox. Actually, let's see if we can download Malwarebytes Browser Guard. Because in theory, that's what you would use if you were using uh, the security product on the system. And now let's rerun the test. Here we go again. So this time we're basically testing how good Malwarebytes is at protecting us. But it's just a stand in for, I guess, a proper security solution. And of course, um, on most of these links, we're seeing these uh, warnings by browser guard saying that it's a suspicious download. That's why the website was blocked. If we go into our actual downloads folder, we have two downloads that successfully made it through. So that's a detection ratio of 98%. So Malwarebytes slightly better than the default browser protection, which gave us 97%. Of course, this is only 100 URLs. If we were to test 10,000, the difference would be more pronounced probably. But it does get the point across. If you're using uBlock Origin, it's not like you're turning off the protections of the browser. Most people will use Google Safe Browsing or Smart Screen and then the ad blocker on top of that. So it doesn't take anything away. But at the same time, what it shows is the ad blocker itself is not necessarily a better shield against real malware. It can prevent you from downloading adware. It can obviously improve your browsing experience in a lot of annoying sites. But in terms of serious malware and direct download, loads, it doesn't really offer that much. Now, before we go, I also want to test one more ad blocker, which is quite popular, which is called Coastery. So I want to see if there's a difference between the two most popular ad blockers. So we're going to rerun the test one last time, this time for Coastery. And it seems Coastery did way worse than uBlock Origin with those two filters turned on. So Ghostry basically allowed us to download all of the malware, almost. Only got a detection rate of like 2%. So do not expect Ghostry to block malware. And also keep in mind, uBlock Origin is only going to block malware if you have the right filters turned on. And even then, the detection ratio of 78% is not that impressive, considering the industry standard for even default protection offered by browsers is kind of like 97% on the same samples. But again, that does does not mean that Ghostry or uBlock Origin are bad. They're great ad blockers. They're great for blocking trackers, getting rid of annoying pop-ups. And they do have the security benefit of blocking adware, malvertising, certain types of online threats. But as we saw with serious malware downloads, they're quite a bit behind the curve and not in any way like a major improvement on what you're getting with the browser anyway. And definitely in no way a replacement for a security solution. I hope you found this information helpful. Please like and share this video if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. Now, if you wanted complete control over the websites your computers connect to in your network, you could do that at the DNS level with Control D, who's the sponsor of today's video. They allow you to control the websites that are visited on your network and your organization. You can block ads and trackers, adult content, social media, whatever you like. And you can also set up custom rules for geo blocking. So if you want to block any kind of traffic going to China or Russia, you could just add at CN to prevent that. Say you're working with sensitive information in the US government and you don't want an all out Kaspersky ban, you could just add not at US. And that way you could block every single query that's not within the US. It's a very powerful tool because you can see it's strictly forbidden to visit msn.com on mine. You can set up your own rules, check them out using link in description, control D.com. You can try them out for free. They have a really easy to use UI, so it's definitely definitely worth checking out if you're looking into network controls. But thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.